the head and we're gonna go straight to the body now tails body admittedly it's very different if the in the anatomy male anatomy episode we did Sonic's body kind of acts like this okay it's kind of like this two points of articulation and it can move forwards okay this is where the legs come out arms okay Tails' body is, because he's a child, it's a little more kid-like. So, if he was to have Sonic's body, he would probably look something like that. Okay. Okay. But obviously, it's rounder, it's fatter. But it's still got that same two points of articulation here and here. Okay. So, the way to go about this is, okay, if you have the imaginary neck, okay, and then you draw the torso, and it's it's kind of just like, it's that part. Okay, if that's the tail and that's the spikes, okay, we're drawing this part right now, here. And then the bottom is greatly, um, shrunk, stunted, smaller, but also fatter compared to Sonic, so um, if I was to draw this straight on, I think it would look something like this. Okay. Actually, let's move that over there so we can compare the two. Okay, and it would actually look more, more like that, I would say. Yep. Good. We'll even add that in for symmetry purposes. Okay, so that's that's what we could expect in the difference in body shape. So it's the same thing, right? The bottom, the top. This one um, is more like a a peanut, and this is more like an upside down light bulb. Kind of think of it like that, like an upside down light bulb. Okay. We're articulating, we're adding a, it's, it's a bit of four, it's a, it got a bit of momentum to it. Okay, so that part, and then the, um, it's kind of like three lines. You have one, two, and then three. So it's like one, two, three and then this kind of like loops all the way back around and this becomes one line so i guess just play around with with the body shape you know what the basic body shape is you can start to maneuver it cool all right also i want to notice point out here is that he puts the shoulder in that is the shoulder That's a really simple detail. You could, he could have just gone like that. Okay, which is fine, but it doesn't look as good. I'm gonna put in a little shoulder. Whenever the arm is in front of the muzzle, put a little shoulder there. It's like, it's such a simple shape, but it represents so much. It's such a, it is such a, what's the word? Like shorthand way, an aesthetically pleasing, unintrusive shorthand way of putting in a shoulder on the character, which that Sonic doesn't really have shoulders in 3D. So, but simply adding this, you're not like, hey, he has a shoulder. You know, there's not like some 3D model where Sonic has this giant shoulder, but it is such a simple shape. Works wonders. Remember that. Okay, that's a top tip. Okay. Let's keep rid of that horrible line. Right up next. So again, the chest fur warps around his body. Okay, if I was to draw the... Actually, it's more like this. Yeah. Okay, so see my interpretation before was a little wrong on how the... on how it wraps. So it'll look... something like that. So where you sit the chest for <laughs> accountability, where you sit the chest for um, just depends on the the body warping in 
3D space. Um, the fur is the same as these shapes, just a little less pronounced, but kind of the same. Got the one, two, one, two, three. It's kind of like one, two, three. And by the way, he drew this in like three minutes. Two, one, two, three. So these shapes are muscle memory to him. <laughs> so just remember that. Um, covers up most of his body as well. But you probably already knew that. Alright. <sighs> this is a spicy meatball. Why is it a spicy meatball? Well, for one, we uncovered the secrets, folks. The hacks. Okay, so in drawing this hand, he started... Now, he's drawn hands a thousand times, especially this specific pose. But what we can gain from it is he started this with... He suddenly had, like, this curve. So he actually... He just had, like, a, a ring like that, okay? Which, which is good. Da, da, da. Da, da. Okay? Didn't, didn't put these lines until after these little cufflink lines, so we'll just leave it how that is. And then he kind of drew like this circle here. He's like, yeah, I kind of know, he's like, I know the hand is kind of in this general vicinity. He didn't, actually, I think he might have completed the circle. He just like had a little circle like that. And so what we can learn from that, if we look closely, is he added these little circles, okay? He didn't add a circle to this finger, but we can add one in. Because now we can see, oh, all of a sudden, we're, we're, we're forming a shape. Look at this. We're forming a shape, and he even adds this line here. Okay. Oh, man, there's just so much to get into with this. <laughs> Alright. So, moral of the story. Put in a circle. An experiment. Okay, you can put in circles where all the different fingers and thumbs are supposed to go and then you can just add them in later okay I'm trying to do like a real wacky like obscure um, what's the word I'm looking for <laughs> perspective <laughs> Yikes. Um, okay. Real obscure. I mean, that looks terrible. But you can understand. All of a sudden, I can, I'm can. i starting to grasp where the... Where the hand is. And it's like, okay. Like, look at that. Okay, I can remove that now. And it's like, yeah, okay. I can kind of see... I can kind of see like a a hand in that form, just using that technique. Now obviously what he does here is he adds these circles in. Remember all of his fingers in that hand tutorial that we went over? Okay, it's like a it's like a one and then a a back over line, this curved background. But if we're not using curves, it would look something like that. Or maybe even another one. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, always never draw smooth lines. Okay, a wise man once told me that. Okay, because if you don't draw a smooth line, you're, it forces you to imitate the shapes. You can't hide behind these these sweet curves. Okay, so remember those are the kind of those are the basic finger shapes. Obviously, spend time in perfect. <laughs> And then the other cool thing that is of note is this this line here because it's like it mimics those inner lines if you look at your hand right now you'll see those lines inside of your hand okay and you can actually use those as guides obviously his is straight through the middle so we can see you know no matter what hand you draw okay if i was to just I was drawing a hand like that. Okay. I can go. I can go in, out, in. 
Even though that's the same kind of hand. In fact, that is pretty much the same kind of hand. Let me, let, let me give you a better example. Um, if I go... I'll do it this way. Okay. And if you go in, out, in, like that. All of a sudden, that, that helps. That helps you to understand like where the that in out in sorry in out in it just helps you understand where these creases go you know where the where the um, bottom of your hand goes um, where the thumb could go okay with that like that it's like a W almost it just helps um, I thought that was cool Feel free to, to experiment with that, but it kind of shows the top of the hand. Okay, um, and then obviously the bottom of the hand, as we talked about in the tutorial. The hand, it's like one, two. Okay, always break it down to its sharpest shape, and that helps out a lot. And the thumb's pretty much the same. Okay, same deal. Really cool. Study this hand, people. Oh, hello. Maybe I should have been doing my videos like this. You're all gonna get so mad. You're like, why didn't you do that before? Yeah, you're right. Okay. A shoe. He did the exact remember in that shoe tutorial? Okay, he did the same thing. Except he's he's actually separated into these into two basic shapes. Remember we had the two different shapes. I know I didn't actually personally didn't break it into the two shapes but we can see the technique okay so it's like they kind of the inside of each other like that whoa like that okay with the with the leg up Okay, we, we, <clears throat> it's the same shape. So, you know, if we were to overlap them, it would look something like that. So instead of drawing the shoe like this, okay, which is, which actually looks kind of cool, it's better to mimic almost like a, a teardrop shape with the foot. Maybe if we were trying to draw it from a different perspective. Okay. We could do something like that. Okay, remember remember I told you about just putting in like the, the sole of the shoe? Okay. Obviously that makes no sense. He'd be like breaking his foot and the cuff is in the wrong spot and it completely change the perspective, you know, it looks something like. Something like that. If we were to, to go for that, okay, real rough example, <clears throat> but we can just make those changes. Okay, um, remember that, and then this is the finished product. Okay, he did another hand over there. I just want to go back over this shoe. Okay, remember that V shape? One thing, I, I said to go like that, but you can actually even break it down further. Okay. Da, da, da. Okay. Remember that shape, people. It is the coolest shoe shape. It looks like a clown shoe, but on these characters, <clears throat> that's the secret sauce. So just remember that. Alright. Hopefully you learnt something, and next time you'll make me accountable. <laughs>